mwisho ni mzee. Eh? <laughs> eh, kuishi kwingi kuona mengi. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Can I request you one more thing? Can I? Ya kwamba tu, tukae hapa na hapa. Ili saidie mzee wetu asitembee sana. Kionangi ikiwa mwinjilisti yule wa glory. Aha. So tukikaa hapa na tukae hapa itatusaidia sana ili kwa sababu tunataka kuongea juu ya madolas na watu wa madolas hawapigi kelele sana so just just move to the end so that watu wanaweza kujaja na tupate hiyo warmth Sijui kama ndugu zangu wa Tanzania washafika ndugu wa Tanzania wako hapa wamefika hawapo kama wako hapo na umetoka Tanzania wametoka haya so inamaanisha tunaweza zungumza hii lugha amen bwana asifiwe sana nitamkaribisha mnanaji wa leo anaitwa daktari Mwangai uh, we share a name and uh, hopefully as we continue to talk we might be sharing so many other things uh, and i know god is going to bless us ata to introduce yule mgeni ambaye amekuja naye of course yule ambaye hapo miongoni mwetu pia ni askofu Kamere ameamua kuja kusikia mambo ya dola na tutashukuru sana mnanaji wetu mwingine ni Geoffrey Kioko ambaye anatuzungumzia juu ya grief recovery lakini mtamsikia uh, siku ya Jumatano siku ya leo ameamua ku hang out with the young people so anasikia fresh blood so yeye tutaondoka na ye ili akaweze kuongea na vijana huko otherwise with the joy of the lord let's put our hands together and welcome this great man who has been a blessing to this church amen so thank you very much uh, reverend francis just hold on here. Uh, I would want to first of all start by introducing my dear friend that I've come with, Reverend Raphael. Uh, just greet us so that we can move on from there. Amen. Please the Lord. I'm born again this afternoon and I thank God for this opportunity to be in this meeting. God bless you. Thanks. Praise the Lord. Are you glad to be here this afternoon? Can you greet your neighbor to welcome him or her to this service? to this evening. So I'm so glad for this invitation by my dear friend and dad, Bishop Jimmy, and our mom, uh, Alice. So I'm so happy to be here to speak to you on personal finances and wealth creation. Tell your neighbor, personal finance and wealth creation. So that's the topic that I'm going to tackle today. Uh, I thank God because uh, I know that today you're not going to leave this place the same. A lot of the things that I'm going to share with you as a, are as, as a result of some of the things that I have gone through my many years in life, in ministry, in business, and all that. Let me say that I do a lot of consultancy. I'm a preacher. I do consultancy. Uh, I do investments, so I do all those things all in one. I pastor at Christian Faith Center in Ruta. At the same time, I'm a consultant with one of the leading consulting companies in Kenya. So we do write strategies for a number of organizations. This year alone, I think we've written strategies for two banks, uh, one cooperative, one leading supermarket, ETC. At the same time, uh, I'm an investor. I run one of the largest college in CPA, that is known as Summit Institute of Professionals. It's a long way avenue, Bank House, if you know Bank House, we are next to Nairobi Sports House. Uko June Sisituko, that's one of our colleges. So some of the things I'm saying, or many of the things I'm going to say, is not just theoretical, but some of the things that have actually helped me and my family, and also helped many other people to achieve uh, to manage their finances and also to create wealth. So uh, I'm just trying to qualify myself so that at least you, I build some confidence. 
Uh, on the academic front, I have a PhD in business administration, uh, and I'm alumni of Strathmore University, ETC. Uh, but more than that, I'm saved and I love the Lord. And I'm going to heaven. I think that's the bottom line. That's what matters. These are the things that are the things that we do here on earth. Uh, the rest, uh, uh, we leave them to God. So I want us to turn to the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 8 and verse number 18. And then I'm going to also read quickly Proverbs chapter 6 verse 4 to 11. And then I'm also going to read Proverbs 8 verse 20 to 21. And after my session, we are going to also have a, a question and answer. So you can prepare a few questions. I can take three questions uh, just for our further understanding. So Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Proverbs 6 verse 4 to 15 says, Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourselves like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest, how long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from the sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler, and your need like an armed man. Proverbs 8, verse 20 and 21. I traverse the way of the righteous in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth that I may feel their treasures. First, I want to say that it is God who gives us the power to make wealth. So making wealth and creating wealth is a godly thing which is ordained of God. God looks at the righteous and he causes them that love him to inherit wealth. That means he causes them to be rich, to be prosperous, and to move forward in life. God, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, tells us to consider the ways of the ant who, having no captain, no leader, is able to gather and put together a store and is able to provide for itself and its family and its group, whatever it is, uh, for a long time. We are cautioned about slumber. And slumber is not just only physical sleeping, but you can also slumber when you are still awake. In other words, there are many opportunities that can come your way, but since you are financially asleep, or you are not aware, or you do not realize the time of your visitation, or you do not realize an opportunity is coming, then you are in a, in a slumber of some kind, and opportunities pass you by. We are cautioned not to slumber. In other words, you need to be people who are awake for every opportunity that comes our way so that we can seize the opportunity. I want to start by talking about the Kenyan situational analysis. Kenya's situational analysis, as it stands today, does not look that good. Today, the country is experiencing liquidity problems, less money in circulation. At the same time, we are finding that we are almost getting to another referendum. We might be getting into an election. We are, we are getting into an election period in 2022. That means money will either be scarce. Or alternatively, what's going to happen, we are going to have an oversupply of money, and there could be inflation and so many other things that come, might, might come in. So we are getting into a period of uncertainties. For many of us who know what election period in Kenya me, ha, brings, we are getting into periods of uncertainty. At the same time, we are finding that the debt-to-GDP ratio in Kenya is one of the highest, whereby we are being told that we are over-indebted as a country. Uh, at the same time, we are experiencing slow growth, uh, in business, we are experiencing companies laying off, we are experiencing suppliers, not, uh, contractors not being paid, etc. That is a groom picture that we have in Kenya today. But nevertheless, the people of God, praise the name of the Lord, there is hope. Tell your neighbor there is hope. It's always good to understand the signs of the times, like the signs of Issachar. You need to understand your times, the times that you are 
are living in. Because the moment you understand the times, then you are able to make plans which are going to be able to cause you to rise above the rest. To be able to overcome and, and, and move forward and rise above the waters at the time that you are living in. I want to move on and talk about the first thing that you need to do is be diligent. Tell your neighbor, be diligent. Proverbs 22 verse 13 says, The lazy man says, there's a lion outside, I shall be slain in the streets. Proverbs 12 verse 24 says, The hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will, not, will be put to forced labor. The Bible clearly says, the hand of the diligent, the hard-working person, will do what? We rule. Tell your neighbor it will rule. So the Bible is telling us to guard against procrastination, a lack of action. We need to be constantly doing something. Like the ant, we must look for something to do. Remember, you should not despise the days of small beginning. It is not how big a thing you are doing. But it is a desire to be constantly doing something in the financial front that will start to set you in the path of wealth creation. There is no lion in the street. Tell your neighbor there is no lion in the street. Tell your neighbor there is no lion in the street. These are, the lions I'm talking about are the things that are, I've just talked about, about Kenyan economical situation. Those are the lions of today. Hallelujah. You know, many people look for excuses. They'll tell you that there's, there's no money in circulation. But let me challenge you. Somebody somewhere is making money. Praise the name of the Lord. Do we need uh, Kinomtu Nataka to see an Kiswahili? We can interpret. We are okay in English. Okay. If you are okay, then we can continue. The most important thing is to communicate. Tell your neighbor we need to communicate. So the lion in the street is a situation whereby people start telling you, Unajua Kenya Mambo Sio Mazuri. Things are very tough. That's the lion in there in the street. The Bible is telling us there is no lion in the street. That's the language of the lazy people. They'll tell you there is liquidity issues. Akuna pesa in circulation. But let me challenge you and tell you, somebody somewhere is making a lot of money, whereas many other people are saying there is no money. Are you still here? Hallelujah. What a fair sifa. We wrote a strategy for an, an organization some months ago, and we were paid about 10 million shillings. What a fair sifa. See only pesa. Hello? Now, there is money. Somebody somewhere has money. All you need to know to do is to know who is this person who has your money. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to know what is the need that you need to address. And as you address that need, some money will come into your, into your pocket. Praise the name of the Lord. So tell your neighbor there is no lion in the street. So get up and go and do something. Don't give excuses that the economy is not working. For many of my years, I've worked, in my past, I worked for some blue chip companies in sales. And I can tell you, many of the successful companies are su companies whereby they refuse to take excuses from their salespeople. For those people here who are working, you know salespeople are pushed hard. Sinikweli. If you don't push salespeople, they'll come and give you all sorts of reasons. And that company will never perform. And that company will close within no, no time. But the moment you refuse to listen to excuses from salespeople, and you make them to go out there and sell, what happens? They start bringing sales. Praise the name of the Lord. Because somebody somewhere has what you need. I want to set the pace here by speaking to the employed people. Because... I'll talk about those people who are looking for jobs. I'll talk about those who are employed. I'm also going to talk about those people who want to start businesses. But let me start by mentioning a few things to the people who are employed. 
I want to say to the people who are employed that if you are employed, you need to guard your job. We are talking about wealth creation. Because some of the, the money and the capital that you'll need will come from a job. So for some of us, you have a job, don't ignore it. You need to be faithful. You need to deliver more value to your employer. You need to be faithful, loyal, and put in more hours into that job. An extra few hours will guarantee you that promotion you've been looking for. Resist looking at the watch and working from 8 to 5 and expecting to make it and have a promotion in your place of work. Always put in some extra hours to, and which will be able to add more value. You'll be able to impress your boss. You'll be able to get a promotion, a salary rise. And with all this, you'll be able to get that capital that might help you to open a side hustle to create some more wealth. Am we together? You know, many times in conferences like this, we stress so much on people starting a job. And we forget there are some people who already have a job. Hello? And those people who have a job, some of them forget that you need to guard that job because that is the best thing that you have so far. And you need to handle it in a way that even when you are still there, you are also making progress in terms of rising and in terms of earning more. There's never any free lunch. Somebody said that. You have to work for something. So for the people who are employed, you need to also learn from Joseph, who was very faithful in the prison and also faithful in the palace. And because of his faithfulness, he was able to rise from the prison to the, and in the palace he was able to rise and become the supervisor. And within no time, God was able to make, cause this man, because of his faithfulness, to become the prime minister of Egypt. A lot of us preachers, we are guilty of never telling you the how to be blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. It's very easy for me to come and stand here and tell you that you're going to rise from the prison to the palace and you all shout amen. But I leave you high and dry without telling you exactly how do you go and do it. And I thank God because this workshop today is actually going to tell you the how. Tell your neighbor you're going to see the how. Praise the name of the Lord. I can easily tell you here, oh, the world of the wicked is ready for the just and you'll all shout. But I don't tell you how will it come to you. Tell your neighbor we are talking about the how now. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. To those looking for a job, if you have no work, you need to understand that the biggest in asset that you have is your time. Tell your neighbor your time. If you don't have work, the biggest asset you have is your time. That time, if you invest it wisely, you can cause it to gradually and slowly start to help you to get where you want to be. That's what we advise people looking for work. Volunteer for something. They might not pay you, but volunteer. They might call you for an attachment. Just volunteer and be faithful. That becomes your first step towards moving towards making some money. To those people who don't have work, consider doing something. If you cannot be able to volunteer somewhere, consider doing something. Even if it's boiling eggs and selling them. Even if it's just making some mandazis and selling them. Do something. Don't sit somewhere waiting for money to come your direction. It will not come to your direction. Today in this country, we are experiencing a phenomenon whereby a lot of young people, and I know they are not here, are into betting. All they do is bet, hoping that one day they are going to win a rotary of a million shillings, a 10 million, 15 million, whatever it is. And that day is a long way from coming. And what has happened is that we have become a betting nation. That is not your portion. Tell your neighbor that's not your portion. Hallelujah. Consider doing something from wherever you are. Today we experience a lot of depression amongst young people. Why? Because they've sat 
and they believe there is no work. Hello? Let me tell you, even people who are coming from universities today, many of them believe there is no work. Can I tell you something? I did my first degree at the University of Nairobi in 1990. That's when I graduated, my first degree in chemistry. 1990. And guess what? That's how many years? It's almost 30 years. There was still no work. Hello? So this is not something new. There was no work. So the story of no work or no, 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 no employment uh, did not start today. It's been there for ages. But there are some people who are able to navigate all these waters and move forward without gambling. Every generation will have a challenge. At our time, as we grew up, we had pyramid schemes. Some of you remember Desi. Sumunakumbuka Desi. Yu ingine ilikuwa zinyi na itwa nini? Eh? Click. Clip. Ilikuwa na itwa clip. Na yu ingine? There were pyramid schemes. They promised us that you, you can put some money and somebody will be paying you in installments about four or five times what you have put in. Those are pyramid schemes. Those things within no time, they only benefit the founders. And within no time, they collapse. The same thing with betting today. It is only benefiting the betting companies. So if you bet and you are here, let me move to the next point. <laughs> you, might, you might not like me after that. Now, what is wealth? What is wealth? Wealth is defined as a plentiful supply of a particular desirable thing. It's also defined as an abundance of variable possession or money. So this word wealth comes from the word weller. It's an English word which was old time. In the Middle Ages, they had the word W-E-L-T-H, wealth, without, without the A somewhere, which basically meant happiness or prosperity in abundance. I know for, many, for some people and for some of us, you can be wealthy in many ways. Whereas for some people, wealth is not just about money. For some people, wealth is about happiness, about your ability to have love, uh, to be sur surrounded by, by, by people who like you and, and progress in particular areas. But for today, allow me to only talk about financial wealth, to be specific. So today I'll address the topic of financial wealth. Where basically then, wealth creation is the accumulation of assets. And here assets, I'm talking about those assets that generate income or those things that generate an income or a return or generate some money over a period of time. A man known as Thomas Stanley and William Danko, who wrote the book The Millionaire's Next Door, said, if you make a good income each year and spend all of it, then you are not getting wealthier, you are just living high. You are just on a high. That means you are making a lot of money and you spend it all, you are not getting what? Wealthier. It is not how much money you make that makes you wealthy. It is how much money you are able to save and invest and cause that money to work for you. That matters. So somebody can earn a million shillings, another one can earn a hundred thousand. But the two might be on very different paths to become very wealthy. The man of 100,000 might save, might invest, and overtake the man who earns a million shillings. That's basically what that means. Therefore, the definition of wealth is this. And I'll get a little bit uh, to speak like an accountant. Assets less liabilities is equal to your net wealth 
net worth, which is basically your wealth. That's how complicated, the most complicated I'll get today. Tell your neighbor assets minus liabilities in bracket put debt. Assets, ukitoa madeni, what remains is your net worth, which is basically now wealth. Are we together? That's basically from borrowed from accounting. Now, when we talk about assets, we are talking about an investment or something that will generate you what? Some money. For example, if you buy some property that you intend to sell, that is what? An asset. If you buy a matatu or a car which is going to do Uber and whatever, that is what? An asset. But if you buy a car for personal use, is that an asset? No. Okay? Liabilities, you know what it is. So when you net off, that is your net worth. When you look at a personal car, it drops in value immediately after you buy it. I'll come back to this, why I'm talking about cars. Because a lot of us, the way we think is that if you see me drive a new car, you think I'm becoming very wealthy, isn't it? Or very rich. The truth of the matter is that that might not be true. Hello? Are you still here? So it is very important to start to understand some of those things. Which then brings me to choices. Tell your neighbor choices. So to create wealth, you need to make a choice where you acquire assets and reduce your liabilities or your debts. In other words, to be wealthy, you need to start to make a conscious decision in your choosing, in your financial decision making, to acquire an asset. An asset, we said, is something that can make you what? Money. You need to reduce your debts so that you are able to have more net wealth and create net, 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 net worth which creates wealth. Where you are today financially is as a result of the sum total of the choices that you made in the past. Might be at some point you decided to buy a new car. Somebody else decided to buy a plot. The two people will have different results. Agreed? That's basically what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter how much you are earning. It matters how much you are savings. I'm talking about choices. So the choice is how much am I saving? Not how much am I earning? You also need to make a choice between two things borrowed from marketing. And those two things are one, needs. Tell, say, tell your neighbor needs. Tell your other neighbor wants. Needs are basically things you can't do uh, 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 without. For example, you can't do without a shelter. You can't do without food. We can't do without what? Help me preach. Clothing. Those are needs. But there's what you call wants. Wants are things that you can do without. You can do without. But the problem with wants is that you see Francis with a nice suit, and now you want it. That is a want. Is that a need? No. It's a want. So because Francis has a nice suit, now you want the suit, it becomes a want to you. You go and invest 20000 or 10000 or whatever amount it is to buy one so that you become look like Francis. There's nothing wrong looking like me. Hallelujah. If you can afford it, God bless you. If you can't afford it, please leave it. Are we still together? So there is, you need to understand between needs and wants. 
So you need to make sure you cover your needs. You sort out your needs. And in your path to financial freedom, you need to defer your wants. That leads us to what we talk about delayed gratification. You need to delay acquiring wants. But for your basic needs, you must and have no choice, but you have to meet them. That one you have no choice. But if you want to become financially able, you want to create wealth, you must defy your wants and delay gratification, but address your needs. Remember, don't try to spend money that you have not earned. Don't try to spend money that you have not earned. A lot of people, and I'll talk about loans, they want to go and copper everything. Simikwele. Watu wana kopa kuanzia credit. Wana ingia furiza. Kopa credo. Until when you, you are selling them money, wana kwa beo sitube kwa hii namba kwa sababu itamezo ayote. She do a katika jina la yesu. Hello? Then the others who are very notorious. You, there, there are some people, I, I can always tell you, who are you to person in Some people who, you, the last time you talked was about three years ago. Then all of a sudden he calls you and he gives you a long story and then he tells you, ni kopeshe pesa frani. Iyo na juanga ita rudi tena. Has it ever happened to you? There are some people whose job is to borrow from Peter, from Paul, from whoever, and they never return. And when you ask them, where, did they, where are they taking that money? They, they, they have no idea. They will not be able to tell you. I don't know. I don't know whether you've seen people wana apewa sifa. Pengine mtu amekupata shilingi elfu kama 10. Alipata 10,000 jana and then he started spending. By the end of 2 3 days hana hata ndururu. And the saddest thing is akifikiria in his mind the 10,000 kule ilienda. Anafikiria alinunua hii alinunua hii akiad hazifiki 10,000. Has it ever happened to you? It has happened. Yani unayesabu mbaka unona kuna mtu wali kuibia. And that is one of the reasons why watu wala kosana na mebibi zao. Because anaona pengine bibi yake ndia lingia kwa mfuko yake ya katoa. We are going to talk about that. Why? Because this person is actually spending money on things he does not need and things he had not planned for. That's why after some time, he cannot account for his money. Nani ya li spend? But yalikuwa tu ni kutua. I have some friends. Uh, 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 let me not talk so much about my friends. But I know somebody. Wana pewe sifa. That's the way of saying one of my friends. Akipata pesa. Ata utajua kona pesa. He is very generous. He is very what? Generous. I, I do not. I do not. I'm not telling you not to be generous. But he is very generous. But a very short, after a very short time, the guy is broke. And I'm very sure he starts wondering, alipeleka pesa yake wapi. Be very careful of that. We are talk, still talking about choices. As far as choices are concerned, aspire for investments and not for consumption. Aspire for what? Investments and not for consumptions. So when you are making your, your choices, always ask yourself, is this for consumption or is this for investment? At the same time, avoid what we call impulse buying. Buying something that you are not planned for because it is on offer. Buying something because it's a big sale. Hello? You know, you ask who in marketing, we are very good in creating a scenario whereby we want you to commit now. So we will put a very big board, 20% off. Yeah? And then we'll keep it up. Or what? Guess what? Sababu naona cheap. 
unafanya nini unanunua the question is had you plant to do it that's what matters was it in your budget and we we'll talk about budget shortly finally on choices if you have a spouse and i believe many of you have spouses one of the ways you can become financially stable and improve your finances is when you make a choice of planning your finances together we are living at a time where a lot of people they believe pesa yangu ni yangu na ya mzee ni yetu hao watu wako hapa hao wako let me tell you that will never help you one of the th- reasons that uh, god has really helped me financially is because i and my wife and she'll be here on wednesday we plan our finances together from the time we got married and we got married at a very young age we do our things together so whether we are buying a property whatever we are doing we do it what together lakini kiwa pesa yako ni yako na ni ya nywele ni ya nini ni ya nini alafu ya mzee ndio ya development hiyo hamtaenda mbali wazee semeni amen unajua nikimsaidia hata yeye mnatakiwa kunipatia jek haleluya so plan as a family put your money together and then ask yourself how do we then move from here i'm still talking about choices impressing people tell your neighbor impressing one of the enemies of wealth creation is the desire of many people to impress others somebody said too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like what a tragedy what a tragedy we are living at a time where by a lot of people and i believe they are not here i'll be meeting them on wednesday they live their lives on facebook and instagram wakiingia kwa restaurant kitu ya kwanza hata kabla ya kule ni kupiga picha na naiweka kwa mtandao hata after that anaweza toka tu because he wants to show that yeye yeah, ametoka wapi Ame, ameingia intercontinental ama ameingia pali panaka fulani akiona benzi yako hivi anakaa hivi anaambia mtu piga piga selfie inawekwa kwa instagram they live a life for others to impress people it was not there in our generation but today that's exactly how people are living their lives and as a result of that a lot of people are getting under a lot of pressure to try and impress somebody are you still here it's so true because even some of us who are here when we go to old boys or old girls meetings to meet the people who to lisoma now ama tukienda nyumbani for family reunions guess what we want people to know we want people to see us and to know that we are doing very well kweli ama sio kweli si ni kweli <laughs> so the ones who are not doing well they don't go for their they don't go for the alumni why because they know alumni watu wanakuja show off so you'll get someone because he knows that there's going to be a family gathering or there's going to be an alumni dinner or whatever it is so this is a time now he has to look for something aende ndio watu wajue hata yeye bado ako juu hata yeye bado ako tu hajaisha let me tell you when you live a life to try and impress people you will not be able to create wealth are you still here so don't live a life of trying to impress people living to impress others is only acceptable by those who haven't discovered their true purpose in life discover your purpose in life and you shall cease to try and impress people and you will become yourself 
Some people will try and impress you with the latest iPhone or the latest Samsung. I'm as quiz in Oppo. We went to Zanzibar the other day and uh, we, we asked their hostess at to take a picture with our group that we do strategy together. We were in Zanzibar two weeks ago. As we gave this lady the, the camera, I mean the phone, at to take a picture, aliangalia moja akasema, ah, yeah, I was to me a Oppo kupiga picture. Ati ataftiwe iPhone. And it is and she said it just so naturally. And guess what? The person who had given her an, an OPPO yeah, was obviously offended. And guess what? Very soon, she's going to go and look for an iPhone. Are you still here? Then this year, there's iPhone 10. Next year, there's iPhone 11. The other year, there's iPhone 12. Then where kila mwaka, Unatoka iPhone 10, unaenda 11. Because umesike hiko na some more futures, na ndiyo watu wananunua. You will never get rich. You will never create wealth by moving the trends. Simu yako kama hiko na baton mbili. Ambia mweza kwa baton mbili. Ire ya red na ire ya green. Kanayo. Wacha mambo mingi. Sema amen. Na kama unatumianga internet, ikue na internet. Na kama unapika nga picha ikuwe na, na kamera. Tosha. Iyo vitu ingini wachana nayo. Mwana apewe sifa. You cannot make money by trying to keep up with the trends. As as marketers, one of the things we do is for us to make our companies relevant. We keep on innovating. Because if we don't innovate and tell you that this one is rated better than the one you bought last year, we shall, our companies will go out of business. So every year, what do we do? We come up with something new. So we'll tell you now this new phone. Yeah? It appears a picture at a cookie and a giza. Sasa, if you pick a cookie and a giza, nani and a picture a giza. But people will still buy. Next year we'll tell you something different. The other year we'll tell you something different. So what will happen? If you do not understand how you create wealth, you'll keep on buying a new phone and a newer phone and a newer phone and a newer phone. Whereas all you need is a green button and a red button. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't be a consumer. Become an investor. Because remember what we talked about wants and needs. The wants are competing for the same money with the needs. Address your needs. And the rest of the money, invest. Praise the name of the Lord. Let move, me move forward. Let me move forward with savings and budgeting. Save, savings and budgeting. That's the other headline. That's my six points. Savings and budgeting. The Bible in the book of Proverbs 13 verse 4 and Proverbs 21 verse 5 says this. Proverbs 13 verse 4 says, The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Proverbs 21 verse 5 says, The plans of the diligent Lead surely to plenty. But those of everyone who is hasty surely leads to poverty. What am I trying to, what's the Bible trying to say? The, the Bible is saying, stop desiring, stop wishing, and start planning. Tell your neighbor, stop wishing, and start what? Planning. A lot of people in the church, they wish things will change. It's a tragedy among us as we are believers. Because we are, we are good and faithful, we are nice, we believe a lot, which is good. But a lot of us are still remaining in the level of wishing. Don't wish for things to change. Plan for them. And then believe God to help you and to enable you and to empower you, and to bring the right people, the right resources, so that that creates an opportunity to catapult you to the next level. Are you still here? Don't just wish, but plan. Personal finance is a financial management to budget, 
save and spend monetary resources over time. So when we talk about personal money, financial management, we are talking of budgeting, savings, investment, and spending your monetary resources over time. It takes as much energy to wish as it takes to plan. It takes as much energy to wish as it does to plan. That was said by a, a lady known as Eleanor Roosevelt. It takes as much energy to wish as it does to plan. In your journey to wealth creation, you need to learn to budget. Budget, budget, budget. How do you start to budget? You start by tracking down your every shilling. Track down your every shilling. In other words, what am I saying? We have talked about earning money. Whether it's from your job or from your business or whatever your source of income is, you need to track down your spending. It will surprise you, like the example I gave you. If you try to analyze and write down how you spend the last amount of money you withdrew from the bank or from your Mpesa, Ebu Jaribu tu uandike tu after this. If you withdrew 10,000 or 5,000, saai tu uandike last week. Sio ata sio, tu siye de last week. Leo ni Monday, Saturday. Nilitua elfutano kwa Mpesa. Nilifanya nini na andika chini. Chances are 70% of the people here will not be able to account for the whole of that money. And for you to be able to create wealth, you need to understand that you need to track down your every shilling. How are you spending your money? A lot of people will tell you they don't have money. But if you start to learn how to write down what, how you've been spending, you will start to realize that some of you spend money on things that you do not need. That's why we talked of needs and wants. You spend money on things you do not need. Some of you realize you spend money on something that you thought you were going to impress Francis and he never got impressed. Now you don't even like it. Unajua kuna watu wananunuanga nguo tu wanasema hii ni kavaa hii waona. Alafu unakuja kanisa alafu unaona hakuna mtu ananoti zata uko na nguo mpya. Has it ever happened? You know those kind of people. Alafu sasa nashindwa na sasa si mimi niko nafikiri sasa hii ndio inabakisha. Anaenda natupa hiyo nguo na hata vaa tena. Wa still akiambiwa na mtu hii nguo inakaaje sasa hiyo atavaa tena. That's lost money. Track down your every shilling. Remember, people trend. Trend, and you know what trending is, on how they spend money. That farmer out there in the village who is milking 10 cows and making 100,000 shillings every other week does not trend. Lakini wewe ume una spend pesa na unaonekana ume spend pesa wewe ndio unakaa una una trend quit that urge of trying to trend and be yourself and ask yourself what is it i'm doing am i am i a consumer or am i investing the foundation of money management is knowing where your money goes you must know where your money goes do you know where your money goes? Therefore, a budget will allow you three things. One, it will allow you to understand where your money goes. It will avoid you from overspending. And you'll find money for saving and invest investing to build your wealth. Therefore, budgeting, in short, is whereby, apart from knowing how you're spending your money, you sit down every time or every period, whether it's a week or a month, and plan down and write down the things that you need and how much it involves, and those are the things that you do. 
anything that is not budgeted for, for, you don't do it. That means if you pass by and you see a sale and you are not planned for that sale, don't touch it. Are we still here? Budgeting also has this other element whereby you have an element where you say, I earn 30,000 shillings, but I'm going to save 20% of that money on a monthly basis. 20% of 30,000 is how much? It's 6,000. And you put 6,000 in a fixed deposit, I mean, in a savings account, and you save it. That is a money of a one year, six times 12 of is what? 72,000. That is the money that you've been always been saying you don't have capital to start a business or a side hustle or whatever it is. Because you have gotten into a culture of budgeting and saving. Praise the name of the Lord. That is very, very important. Let's move to the other point, investments. Investments. Proverbs 13 verse 22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. After you have budgeted your money, you know where your money is going, you have addressed your needs, you have deferred your wants, and you have put a certain amount of money in savings, then that money needs to be invested. Listen to me. I hear so many people wondering about what to do with the little money they have. Some of them, they try to buy a plot nearby. They hear he plot in million kumi, million shirini, and they wonder where on earth will they ever raise that money. Can I tell you something? Many, many years ago, the plots you see here were going for might be as little as 8,000. Are you still here? Today you are trying to buy here, but you cannot afford. Thank God if you are able to afford, but majority of people are not able to afford. Yet, there's an opportunity somewhere, whether it is Kamulu, or Kitengela, or whatever it is, whereby your 8,000 is a down payment, 50% down payment for a plot. Are we still here? For heaven's sake, let me advise you. With as little as even 100,000, you have a down payment of a plot in Mualimu Farm, in Juja, in Kitengela, in Isinya. Somewhere, somewhere, you can be able to buy a plot. Do not ignore or underestimate what you have. Many of us, if you are taken to Kitengela today or Isinya, utangale useme huku kutakuwa lini, let me tell you, within no time, your place itakuwa. Go and invest there. Watch a pesa yako ikae pale isinya, ikae pale kitengela, ikae pale mwalimu farm, ama juja farm, na kaplotikako, hata kama utalipa na five installments, lipa na installmentano, siku moja itafika, utanikumbuka. Tell your neighbor you will thank pastor. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what we started doing. I remember our first plot I bought at the university uh, when I was at the university with my boom. At that time, we used to be paid to read. Sio kama sikuizi. Najua some of you are surprised. Tuko tunalipwa. Hello? Tuko tunapewa pesa tusome. I was being reminded by my wife, my wife yesterday. Naniambia na tukienda kukula, tuko nakula kama ni mkaawa, five star. Wacha hii wanakulanga asai. Na tuko very naughty. Amwezi kukula in order, tuko na gojiana hapo inje. Hata kukifungudio milango tuna gojiana, tukue wengi. Ndiyo tusukumane kidogo, tusikia mzuri, tukingia. Tuko tunaita OC, opening ceremony. To cut the whole story short, we used to be given 5,000 shillings as boom. We called it boom. It was a lot of money in the 80s. I used that money to buy my first plot in Utawala. Whereas my colleagues, most of them walikuwa naenda na nua music system, ile kubwa. 1,000 PMPO. That was the power output. Yeah? So we, we always laugh. I, we always laugh with my wife because some of them, today we know them, they still have nothing. But 
you can see the small money that I had, I was able to start to buy plots. Started buying those two plots those days. 5,000 shillings. Unatenda kwa society, hata ujui yo plot itatoka lini, lakini umeeka pesa huko after five years, umeitua certificate, after another ten years, umeitua title deed, then all of a sudden, you realize, hai, hai, kwani unatutu pesa? The time you think of selling, you are selling it a couple of millions. Praise the name of the Lord. Invest in something. You might not be able to invest in budgets of millions if you don't have millions. But the few thousands, hundreds of thousands that you can be able to save over a period of a year or two, put it somewhere and you'll be very, you'll be creating wealth. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, there is, my time is almost up. Let me move to in financing. Financing. That should be like my last one. When you're financing, you need to understand that a big part of building wealth is making wise choices about credit and debt. You have to make a choice between credit and debt. So when you're taking any debt, ask yourself, am I taking this debt to invest or am I taking debt to consume? Am I taking this debt or loan to consume or to invest? Am I addressing my needs or my wants? You need not to borrow for consumables, but borrow to buy an asset. Some of you need to understand, and I have nothing against mobile money, that some of the monies you are borrowing you are paying a tremendous amount of interest without realizing. Hello. I once worked for one of the telcos as a senior manager, so I know. Some of you, you are paying even up to four, I mean up to 200% interest per annum. The fact that might be you are, you are paying, uh, you borrow a thousand shillings, unalipa elfu moja na miambili, over one month, you think is little money. If you compound, if you do the analysis over a year, that might be 200% or whatever it is. Are we still here? And a lot of people, that's exactly what is happening in their lives. You are paying a lot of interest on money that you consumed instead of paying interest on money that you invested. And that starts to make a very big difference in the lives of people. In short, what I'm trying to tell you, quit borrowing for consumption, but borrow for investment. And as you borrow, read the fine prints. Understand what interest you are paying. Banks today, with the capping, have been charging about 13%. Without the capping, they might go straight higher to about 16% per year. Some of the loans on your phone might be 16% per month. Multiply that by 12. Tell me how much it is you're paying. Hello? One of the best way to borrow money is through the cooperatives. If there's a cooperative in your place of work, join it. Some cooperatives will even allow you to join even if you are not an employee. Like Muasibu, Mualimu, and a, a few others. You can join them. I'm a member of those and I'm not employed by them. Join cooperatives. You'll be get very, very low interest. And finally, on, on borrowing, if you have a good borrowing record, that means you're not the kind of person who borrows without returning. Guess what is the best way to borrow? It's borrowing from your friends and relatives. It is interest free. Tell your neighbor it is interest free. But do you know why we do not borrow from them? Because the last time we borrowed, we didn't return. That's what the problem is. But if you are a faithful person, and this is a secret, looks so simple, if you want the best loans, the best investment, from your parents, 
from your friends and from your relatives. Those people have a lot of money. They can help you create a lot of wealth and do a lot of investment. The only problem is not them. It is us. You borrow someone, you have no intention of returning. Unasima simu. Akikupigia ingine, unatupa yu laini, unaeka ingine. Wacha kutafute. Then you do that to someone else and someone else. Before long, you are credit unworthy. But if you are credit worthy, guess what happens? You go to the person, he will give you money. And if you are your friend, ukinichisha elfu miambili, nita kupatia, na utanirudisha ikiwa tu miambi, miambili. And I always tell people, you better tell me, nipatia elfu miambili, nita kupatia after three months because nikona ishida. Instead of telling me, ah, pastor, kuna kachekangu wakajaiva, eh, nipatia elfu miambili, takurudishia kesho jioni. Then kesho jioni, oh my, nipatia shuguri. Na kupigia, na niambia, ah, mchungaji, eh, niko kamukutano kidogo, nita kupigia. Yo kamukutano kataendelea miaka, mwaka, miaka mbili. Praise the name of the Lord. Borrow to invest. Keep a good name. Finally, on business ideas, for those who want to have a business, look for something that you can do. Look for something you can do. You might not be employed. You might not have this. You might not have that. But look for something you can do. Keep yourself busy. Have that entrepreneurial spirit. Whatever that is, do it. Follow your passion. Each one of us can do something. For me, I can talk to people. For you, maybe you can cook some mandazi. For someone else, you can boil some eggs. For someone else, you can be a tailor. Whatever it is, God is looking for what you have that he may bless it. Avoid procrastination. Avoid being idle. Avoid doing nothing. Avoid that gambling spirit of only thinking about betting and, and, and pyramid scheme and do something. Finally, I leave you with these words. Take responsibility of wealth creation and managing your finances. Number two, spend less than you earn. Number three, borrow to invest and not to consume. And finally, always know where your money is going. So with that, I come to the end. God bless you very much. Now, uh, I have a few minutes, about 10 minutes, where I can take a few questions. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Joshua from uh, Living Faith Ministries, Nyeri. My name is a quick one, sir. With all, you are an asset. Then allow me to use uh, the terms that you've just uh, uh, used. Because of uh, your academic credentials and the experience that you have in, uh, you have accumulated over time. Yes. My question is very simple. I'm a former banker, and I decided to join uh, to venture into business, not because I was pushed, but I was pulled into it. Uh, you understand what I mean? But the sad thing is this, and that, that bring, this brings me to, to the question. Do you do what you call mentorship as, as, as part of what you do? Because we are having a capacity gap within the church. When I ventured into business, I lost over 4 million shillings in a venture. I did not just lose friends, I also lost the believers. And some of the pastors, wherever I was in that particular town, they don't have the capacity to handle failure in business. Because people tend to run to the pastors for solutions, either for spiritual endowment or anything else. But at least you're trying to build up hope. Do you have a program for pastors that you can be able to help them? Because they're almost on the first line of defense as far as the believers are concerned. Because uh, when you told, we have a common denominator. When I didn't find a solution in the church, I joined Strathmore Business School. 
And every single year, we go into SME conferences. The way we come here for spiritual nourishment. And I found one man who told me, Joshua, you've only lost four million. I lost ten. But when you go to Mashambani, people are telling me, when you in Jinga, you pesa kana money. Because people who, can, who have never lost money, they can only understand the level of their loss. If I've never lost 10,000, to someone who has ever lost 100,000, you will be able to encourage me. But if you have never lost a coin, you do not know. You have got no business understanding what I'm going through. Do you have a capacity building program for church people? Thank you. Amen. That's a very good question. <laughs> very tough to answer because uh, uh, we personally I don't have, but what I do is I'm invited for meetings like this to speak to people and hopefully by disseminating some of this information then we are able to, to start to equip the body of Christ with information. But I was speaking to one of the pastors here who was telling me, he looked at my notes because I have them here. <laughs> so, so that's one of the things. Um, let me also add something that for those people who might be interested in business, I came purposely with some crash disk here. It's like I thought something like that would come. So if you're looking for business and you have one business ideas, I will give this to Reverend Francis. It has got businesses, business plans, over 30 or 40, that you can actually start, whether it's a small pharmacy, a small salon, and a machoma joint, very well analyzed, that I will leave to uh, Reverend Francis. Reverend Francis, just stand up for the sake of those who people, people who are outsiders, this is the reverend in this church. Give him a good hand clap. Amen. So I'll give the, him this. Uh, maybe you can share that information with them. The people who is interested. Only the person who is interested. So you need to come with a flash disk. Wendo Muone Saile is free after the conference. Akueke, Wendo Wangalie, you will be able to borrow some ideas which will be able to, to help you. Uh, secondly, still on still on mentorship. I would also want to say that because of challenges of geographical locations and ETC, it's always good for someone to look for a mentor. Like I know personally, I mentor so many people. But that is at a personal, at a personal level. So mentorship is open. Uh, there are many pastors and, and many people like me who are able to, 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 to speak to people's lives. Uh, I'm glad that you, you are strengthening. Yeah, it's a good place to be. I was I welcome the MBA class this year, so they keep on calling me for those those meetings and talk shows. And in the process, I, I try and disseminate information. Thank you. Any other questions? I have another one here, but before I address this one, yes. Praise God. Uh, my name is Rahab. <coughs> Sorry, I have a, a small cold. Um, my concern is uh, what you're telling us to track every shilling. Because I want to believe that most of us, this is not the first uh, training or workshop on, uh, on, on, on what you're te teaching us today. Uh, for me, I have attended another training and we were still trained on uh, how to track our money, where our money goes. But I do it for maybe a month, then I am not able to continue. So I was wondering what, what is, can motivate me to continue until, because sometimes I say I'm going to do it maybe about six months, but after the first month, I just, I'm not able to continue. Uh, and I really desire to do it because I know it can really benefit me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number one, I want to assure you don't have a, a demon. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Now, the, the, the motivation is, is something that you need to, how do I put it? You need to psych yourself. You, you need to, to, to purpose to motivate yourself based on understanding of the return that you're looking for. I'll give you an example. For, as a person, 
I didn't come from a privileged background. But at some point, I realized that uh, I came from uh, the families we call humble families. Do you know them, eh? So I do a humble family. And I realized that the only way I can come out of that is if I read. Okay? So, and I started to see if I went to school and I performed very well in school, then I'll be able to get out of this humbleness, read uh, poverty, and make something for myself. And being the firstborn, we used to live in one roomed house. Next to us was a bar. And nyumba ya mbao. And my mom is cooking here. I'm in a somea. Pa kuna kitanda hivi na tukua toto wa nane. ETC. One room, eh? Ten by ten. So, so I, 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 I'm talking about motivation. You, you, you need to start to see where you want to go. So that urge to get out of this mess and become something became so strong in me that my mom would be cooking behind me here. I am reading here. The wall is here, and there's a bar next door, na niambau, ata kuna meanya unaona what they are doing, and I could still read na ile nyitera, yeah, and become number one. Yeah? So I was always fast, 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 despite all those things. All the way in secondary school, I was the best in Dagoriti High School, I was an ETC. To an extent, even when I went to Strathmore, the same thing went on. I was the first person ever in Strathmore University to finish a master's degree before you do your final paper. Defended a thesis, finished as Jamalida the final paper. Are you getting what I, for those who understand what she means? When I did my doctorate, I finished my doctorate in two and a half years. People take 10 years, 15 years. So I'm still coming to what you're saying. What did I learn different? I learned that you need to motivate yourself. Come up with a routine. And people hate routines. So what I did up to today, and I share that with my, my boy, I have a timetable, a weekly planner. Like even this week, I can tell you exactly where I'm going to be. Every day. So like yesterday, I wrote down, today in the afternoon, I am here. Tomorrow in the morning, we are going to see another farm in Kitengela. On Wednesday morning at 6.30, I'm playing golf at Mudaiga. On Saturday, I'm playing golf. On Thursday, this is what I'm doing. So I actually plan my week the whole week like that. And I make sure that if you come in and you try to tell me let's go elsewhere, I will look at my plan and refuse to do it. In the same, same discipline, I translated into my finances. Such that I put down everything I want to spend. I write it down. It is tedious, but I know if I don't do that, what do I, will I do? What will become of me? I will slide to where I'm trying to come out of. So in short, what I'm trying to say is, it's not an easy thing. You must motivate yourself by seeing where you want to go and where you're escaping from. Is it helping you a bit? Yeah? So it is no, there's no shortcut. I have done it for over 30 years. I still do it today. The same plan I used when I was in school, a weekly planner, I was sharing it with my son. You know? I write down everything, not only spending, but even where I'm going to be the whole of this week, I know, and I write it down. If you try and debate me, I refuse. So the same with finances. Write it down, you know, and it will help you. And actually what she's getting to is where the problem of many people is. It's not that you are poor. It's only that you don't know where you are taking your money to. And because you don't know where you are taking your money to, ukiona sale pahali, unanunua. Ukiona watu kitu na uzwa raisi, unanunua. Before you know it, all your money, I can see some of you smiling, all your money has gone to things you don't need. Somebody is saying is true. You are doing things you don't need. Yet the thing that could have gotten you out of poverty because of the investment and because it is an asset. Remember what you said is an asset. It's something that can generate you some money. You never did it. Look at the money you waste on things you cannot even remember you bought. Look at your last salary last month. Unyambie, 
just do that exercise ukienda nyumbani. I like the smile. Right? Put that put, do that exercise ndio unjue kile nakwambia. Works. Do an exercise. Leo jioni homework. Nenda uandike mshahara yako last month. Saa hii tuandika nilinunua hii na ni pesa fulani. Then you add it. Alafu niambie kama itafika hiyo pesa ya mshahara. Chances are some of you will not even account for 50%. What does that tell you? It tells you that 50% of your salary went on things you don't need. No wonder you can't even remember them. Are we still here? So assuming now that 50% you plan to save. And before you started spending, uliweka kwa account, your savings account. Na au kuguza. A year, if your salary is 30,000, 15,000 times 12, you guess what it is, about 100,000 plus. And that's the difference. It is tedious, but a routine helps you and disciplines you. So you need a discipline. It's a choice. It is not easy. It's a choice. But nevertheless, it is achievable. Amen. One more last question. Yes. Um, my name is Shifra. Um, what advice do you give to young couples? Um, when you got married, probably you started doing the financial journey together. But somewhere along the way, one partner broke the trust. And then one person opts to do it independently. So what advice would you give? Well, that's a good one. Uh, you are a couple. Remember, the Bible says you are one. Number two, you need to always remember that in this journey of life, people will make mistakes. Kama ni wewe, ama ni mimi, one of us, at some point, will make a mistake. And that mistake can also be repeated. Siati ukifanya mistake moja ni moja na ni amusho. Yes, we are forgive them seven times. Is it seven times seven? <laughs> Seventy times seven. Yeah? Times. So, in other words, you need to reach a place whereby you forgive your spouse and you restart the journey again. You, as a sane person, yeah, you, as a person who understands this thing, need to take an initiative and bring your spouse to the table and show your spouse that yes, if we can do this together, we can be able to put our money together and build our future, even if not for ourselves, but for our children. Because remember, wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So you have an interest to bring your partner to the table, forgive him, and tell him now, let us look for something to invest. Of course, you now know the person. That means you'll have be a little bit wiser. That means you have to ask that you be very clear on the investment opportunity. So if it's a plot, neta kwaza make sure meyona na muende na ye. Make sure mefika uko na umeona mpaka treasure na na we mwenye u make sure umedeposit yo pesa mukiwa na ye. Wacha jine yandiko ye na ye. Lakini at least you you are helping him in a way because might be you know if you give him the money might be something will happen. So it has to start from somewhere. And that process has to keep on happening. So, so, so it is not something that you only do once. Just try and, and forget about that, forgive, bring the person again, but now learning that akonai weakness, akonai weakness, so you look for ways to, to avoid those areas. Can I take one more? We are done. There's one here. Now, uh, okay, yeah? There's one here. Uh, somebody says, can you explain who are these professionals? Economist and two, financial analyst. One, an economist is basically looking at the economy of a country or economy of people. We have macro and micro economists. Micro is a bigger country wide. Ma micro is the uh, economy of uh, individuals. Yeah? So basically an economist just looks at these are the people who look at the GDP, the consumption of a country. How and your watu ambao anaangalia wanaambia government that you need to borrow this money because uh, there's little money in circulation. These are the people who look at consumption pattern. These are the people who look at how much we are producing as a country. These are the people who 
who do all those things. Look at demand, supply, and all that. So that's what an economist does, yeah? in short. A financial analyst. <clears throat> a financial analyst analyzes money and financial instruments. So a financial analyst, in most cases, would have something like a CFA, would be a certified financial analyst. There's courses like CFA that you can do. So these are just might be something related to uh, accounting like CPA, but slightly different because it analyzes money and money markets, money instruments, things like uh, stocks, in the stock, stock market, shares, bonds, little karma iso. Yeah? So that's a financial analyst. So to be a financial na analyst, just to add something, a qualified financial analyst, you need to study and have a CFA, Certified Financial Analyst. For you to be an economist, you can just go easily and to a university and get a degree in economics and you'll be able to understand the economy of a, of a country. Okay. Oh, there's one last one. Ah, that's the last one because I know my time is gone. Uh, I've already overrun it by 10 minutes. It's becoming interesting. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Praise Jesus. There are these monsters. I don't know how you would handle them yeah. from your desk. You have invested and uh, you are diligent enough and you are moving forward. And you have also prayed enough but you have these characters who have your money, they have not paid you. Unpaid debts. These unpaid debts are making you struggle with your finances. That's one. Number two, the, how do you handle the unfaithful workers? Because you have invested, but unfaithful workers have come in. The last one is how do you handle the, the fraudsters in the current market? Because they have really lobbed men and women of God. Thank you. That's Thank you. a good question. Give him a hand for that. <laughs> Quickly, uh, number one, how do you handle debt? People have not paid you. Let me start by saying this. In the marketing, we learned a sale is never complete until you have been paid. Second thing we were taught in finance is cash flow is king. Therefore, the number one thing before you loan people money, you need to understand their credit worthiness. Secondly, and most important, is avoid giving people loans or selling on credit. Are you together? I still haven't answered this question. I know what he's asking. But preemptive first sell cash. You are better off with cash yeah, of a thousand shillings than a credit of a million outside there. Okay? Hii mambo ya kukopesha watu pesa, ndi unaunanga watu anatoroka. In fact, a lot of people, even small kiosu, mutu anakopa nyanya hapa, maratatu, sasa kesho kwa sababu wana pesa ya kukulipa, ana avoid kioski yako, anaenda ile ingine. So the temptation tunakuanga nayo is that you think that if I don't give you credit, utatoroka. Watch aende. Please don't sell on credit. Sell on cash. Now, Tiari, my brother has sold on credit. What do we do? You have to take the legal course of action. And that is, if you have the invoice, you have proof, then you can sue somebody. You can actually go to court and try, uh, or no, sorry, before you go to court, you can engage the services of a debt collector. Now, the debt collector will also always cost you some money. And this debt collector, worst case scenario, uh, is that you can actually use that process until to a place where you actually get an auctioneer to recover your money. But again, it's a tedious process. So avoid that. Number two, the second question you asked was on on uh, those fraudsters and faithful workers. 
unfaithful workers. For you to avoid the problem of unfaithful workers, the first thing you do is if you have a business, you need to put proper controls in place. Today, I see, for example, even simple business like a kinyozi or a salon, what to make a CCTV. Have you seen that? You have you asked yourself why? Kwa sababu mwenyewe hayuko hapa, lakini at akika kwa laptop yake, ataona hiyo ni kichwa moja imenyolewa, hiyo ni yule nyingine ime ime imechanwa. Are we together? That's one of example of a control. In supermarkets for example, we advise them to put pedestals. Pedestals ukienda kutoka kwa supermarket, kuna chuma mbili kwa hapa na nyingine iko hapa hivi. Ukipita na kitu inalia. Si ndio? So that's another form of, of control. It's done in the front end and in the back end for staff and also for people coming to the supermarket. Another way of putting control is using softwares. Like I have a friend of mine who has a hardware shop. Aliniambia aliibiwa, akaibiwa, akaibiwa, paka karibu wafungwe. Then he realized all he needs to do is to invest in a software ambayo anaweka stock zake zote na mtu akitoa kitu yote it shows in the stocks then each one of his stores kama ni ya chuma amepatia mtu mmoja hiyo kazi wewe ndio unaangalia chuma wewe ndio unaangalia simiti na hakuna mtu mwingine simiti wakifanya stock ikikosekana mbili wewe ndio utalipa chuma ikikosa tatu wewe ndio utali utalipa so you have to reach to that level whereby you put controls and you make your workers accountable for what they are in charge of. And, and remember, a lot of these businesses, we are not there in person. So controls are very, very important. We can go, or, uh, we can sit with you and I can tell you about the many controls depending on the type of business you are in. But in every business, there are things that you can put controls in which are able to show whether something has happened. Remember one of the things that is very important, if you have stock, is a stock take that you need to have a stock take every month. I, I wrote a strategy of one of the leading supermarkets, I don't want to tell you which, I wrote it from back to back, and one of the things I told them is that they must do a daily, uh, daily stock reconciliation, daily. Can you imagine a, a leading supermarket with over 50 branches in Kenya? They do a daily stock reconciliation. Kila sijioni, wana make sure jioni wana chukua stock na wana And it is happening. So even in your case, if you did a daily stock reconciliation, unambia watu apana, amutoki hapa mpaka stock iba, ibalance. Isi po balance, wezi ndi ulikona uza chuma, na ulikona kuza simiti, unali, unakata kwa mshara. Yeah? Finally, there is fraud. We talk, asked about fraud. Eh? Fraud again is an, an issue, and what you need to do is that there are many fraud rent deals in this country. One of the things I can say, if a deal sounds to be so good, most likely something there's a catch. So always scrutinize the deals that are coming your way because fraudsters will always try and put a carrot, uh, make it so sweet and very nice. 